Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Ariel. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator here at the Reserve and today I'm going to take you on a quick exploration in the salt marsh habitat here at the Elkhorn Slough Reserve. Um, salt marsh is a habitat defined by plants that are growing out of the mud. So in this case we have pickleweed mostly that's growing up out of the mud, it can actually trap and store and hide away the salt in the water um, and thus be able to survive out in this habitat that any of these upland plants, um, like grasses and coyote brush and all the invasive weeds, can't. So pickleweed grows out of the water. Um, by doing so, it actually stabilizes some of the mud and creates these big platforms that animals can hide out on. And right now you can actually hear some of our migratory birds. Those are the iconic Canada geese who come here every spring. Um, they're out nestled into the salt marsh. They, along with um, hundreds of other bird species and shorebirds, will uh, and can make their nest in these salt marsh habitats, uh, which is great because they're surrounded by mud, uh, but they've got these floating platforms of pickleweed, um, so they're kind of protected. They have, I like to say, it's like a uh, force field around them. Whereas when you're a shorebird out on the beach or a Canada goose out on the beach, there's people, there's dogs, there's things that are gonna uh, come up and bug you. Out here you'll notice there's not a lot of people or dogs or big predators running around through the mud. So this makes a really ideal habitat as a resting space and as a nesting space for those migratory birds, as well as our iconic sea otters too. Uh, today though, I actually set out some crab traps for us. And though I didn't catch any crabs, I did catch a couple of cool species that live under the water and in the pickleweed. So we're gonna zoom in on those real quick uh, and check these out so we can get them back into the water. These crab traps are uh, basically just little plastic uh, containers that you snap shut and lock onto a pole that you can stick into the water or into the mud. And we leave them out overnight. There's a little hole in here and that's where things enter, but because of the way it's structured as they enter to try to get the bait, which is hooked on, you'll see in that little film canister. As they try to come in and get the bait, they can't get the bait because it's stuck in a can. They can only smell it. And then they can't get out because this hole is really hard to find with all of this netting. But of course, we come and release them. So we would never leave one of these traps out more than about 12 to 20 hours. We just use them to trap stuff. So the things that I have caught in here today, I have two shrimp. I believe they're the same kinds of shrimp. You can notice that they're kind of spotted. They've got up in the top right here, they've got those long antennas at the front. They're twitching, they're alive. They can actually, a lot of these animals can handle being out of the water for long and I've had them in the water prior to filming the video. So they're, they haven't been out really long. Um, in addition to these shrimp, oh, there's one where you can really see like the paddle on him or her. I don't know how to tell their genders apart. But this fish down here, you'll see, this is probably one of our sculpins. Sculpins are an amazing fish that lives um, and is found uh, across tide pools all over California. There are several different species. Um, they tend to have these iconic, really, really big heads with... Um, a really large what's called operculum. So if you look up the skull of a fish, it's kind of like I say the cheekbone. Um, they got big cheekbones and that is kind of the iconic sculpt and shape. They also have a really amazing ability to hang out outside of um, the water. So even though this fish breathes underwater, it can survive up on land, um, some of them up to like a day or two. Uh, because they live in these tidal zones out in this marsh area where sometimes, like right now, the tide's up really high, but in another six hours, this will look like a mudflat. This will look, uh, there will be far less water. 
And so if you are an animal that has to live in this habitat, like one of these fish or sculpins, you really have to be able to survive despite the water or, or outside of the water, I should say. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things out here. I encourage you to check out our sea otter cameras. Um, there's some cool citizen science stuff that you can do uh, to help our researchers track sea otters and you can see them from the comfort of your home. So check that out that, by going back to our homepage and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.